twist of University Motors. This is another exciting addition to our YouTube video library, which is now at least 350 um, videos, at least 350 YouTube videos, with as I'm making this announcement on the, today's like May 25th, 2021, there's over 9 million views on my channel. So thanks to everybody for watching them. You don't have to watch them for long, as long as you watch them just a little bit. I, I think I get the click and then that translates into a hundredth or a thousandth of a cent or something for the views, but it all adds up to something. So thanks for watching. We've got a problem with oil pressure on this MGA and we're going to do a quick diagnosis here and see if we can figure out maybe what's going on. So Max is going to zoom in on the oil pressure. Um, this key fob is, is um, in the way. A lot nicer to have a key fob that you can put up on top of the wiper switch. So we're going to start it up. It should already be up to about 40 pounds. Looks like it's sitting at zero to me. So we can get it up to 20. There it goes up to 60 up there. But it should it should go up to 60 pounds. Um, just as soon as I touch the throttle like that, it should jump right right up and it's not. So we're going to put another gauge on it, test it real quickly, and we're going to check it for aeration. So let's go underneath the bonnet. So here we are underneath the bonnet within a cup. It's a lot nicer, a lot easier to use a, a uh, glass jar when we're looking for aeration. But here's our hose that comes off the engine. So we're going to take him loose and we're just going to let him vent into here as soon as we start up the car key is on and okay so it looks like there's plenty of oil co coming out of here and um, geez Hard to believe that that's not uh, proper pressure. There's a lot of oil in here and there's no hint, there's no hint of aeration. Let me tell you, when it's aerated, you can see the bubbles and the bubbles are climbing to the top all the time. It's not an uncommon problem. Um, so anyway, we're gonna just take another gauge here that doesn't work very well. I've gotta tap it to get the thing back to zero, but we're just gonna check the gauge here and these gauges are not made to hook on to these hoses. But usually, he says with great confidence, usually I can get them to stick on there just enough to start to get a reading. But no, since no good deed goes unpunished, the... Uh, the nut here is not long enough on this new oil pressure line to fit there, so we don't know if the gauge is bad. The rule is oil pressure gauges never go bad. That's the rule. There are exceptions, of course, like this one that's sitting at 20 pounds to start with, and if you bang it and so forth, it'll go back down to zero, but then just soon enough it'll pop back up to 20. Very unusual. Gauges are almost always okay. So that's the only way I've got of testing this um, using an original pressure gauge. But I've got another pressure gauge. Let's try that. Here we are with another gauge um, fixed up here. So we're going to start the car up and see what happens. Easy for me to say. See what happens with our oil pressure. And it would appear as though we've got a problem here because so again, most oil pressure gauges work just fine, the one in the car does, and it does accurately represent what's going on. So we've got, we've got oil pressure so low in this engine that it's not safe to drive the engine without fear of some kind of damage because there's not enough oil pressure getting to the connecting rods and the main bearings at 
you know, we just got done driving it around, you know, at like 20 miles an hour or something, but at 20 miles an hour, you should, you should have 60 pounds on the gauge, absolutely. So what's wrong here? Not the oil pressure relief valve, because the owner's already changed that. So that, so now we've got like what, there's a problem with the oil pump, that's why I checked for aeration. You can tear the gasket or have a problem, especially on an MGB, and you can get air up inside there, and the, once the air is in there, then that compresses. So that's not our, our issue. So what is? You don't know until you drop the sump. Tedious on an MGA, but you gotta drop the sump, take the oil pump out, check the clearances and see if that's okay, and then drop a couple of the bearings and see what's going on there, plastic gauge them, maybe. Uh, the oil disappears in, in the, in the uh, main, um, on, the, on the crankshaft. It doesn't usually disappear someplace else. You can lose it at the camshaft. There's some weird, really weird things that happen, but just generally speaking, and probably on, on this one, there's some problem with the uh, rod main bearings. So anyway, we'll let you know how this works out eventually. It might be 80 videos from now, who knows? Again, thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you at one of the Zoom sessions or at one of the MG events throughout the summer. Uh, I try to post on my website where I'll be, what I'm doing, and you can come see me do my rolling road tech or come to some dry erudite presentation about the TDTF workshop manual, you know, who knows. Anyway, thank you very much. Until then, safety fast.